Again, if you're listening, okay, let's do it. So <clears throat> I was one time challenged with one of my students. Um, second weekend, I guess he was already frustrated with me. And he challenged me. He raised his hand halfway through the, the, the chapter. And he goes, wait a minute. I thought we're learning biology. Why are we going over chemistry? Oh, very good question. <laughs> well, I just thought, right. I, I went up to him and I said, well, let me take the oxygen out of you and see what happens. And he goes, oh, okay. <laughs> I think he realized, oh, well, without chemistry, I don't, I'm not alive. Of course not. All right? You are actually a combination of all the sciences. You believe it or not, even math. That we all hate, right? You are a combination of physics, biology, and chemistry. Just think about the next time, for example, you pick up your book bag. I mean, look at what's involved there. Everything. So to teach you biology, you have to have some kind of working knowledge on chem with chemistry. I'm not saying I'm going to teach you chemistry, chemistry. That's for another, chem another class. But I'm going to teach you the chemistry that you need to, sur to survive in this class. For example, later, in a, in a very soon actually, we're going to start talking about hydrogen bonding. Y unless you know what that is, we're going to start talking about covalent bonding, ionic bonding, molecules, and macromolecules. And, and again, how are you going to know what that is if you don't know the base, basic level uh, chemistry here? All right? So let's go through it. Thank you. Thank you. The simplest part of matter is the atom. atom. Very good. Um, elements are made up of the same element. An element, for example, like carbon, is made up of the same atoms. Which ones? Carbon atoms. So when we look at the periodic table, we realize that each of these elements is made up of the same element. For example, car uh, atom. Carbon element is made up of carbon atoms. Nitrogen is made up of nitrogen atoms and so forth. So an element is a collection of similar atoms. But then, if that's all we have, then we don't have the potential for life. If all we have on Earth are elements, that's not life, remember? So elements will come together to form new things like compounds and molecules to start building life. So when you combine elements together, and we'll talk about that maybe next time on Wednesday, you're going to start making compounds and molecules. Now you're starting to build the stuff of life, and eventually you're going to get to the cell, and you'll have life. So what's an example of that? An example of that is this. Sodium is actually a metal. Chlorine is actually a gas. Put them together. What do you have? Sodium chloride, table salt. That's what you put on your food. But realize that sodium chloride looks nothing like its constituent parts. And that's chemistry. You add two elements together to get a compound or molecule. So the chemistry of this is even the appearance of it. It looks nothing like its individual parts. All right? Now we take you apart and we realize, look at this. You are made up of four main elements. Did you catch the reference to the exam? Which word that I just said that tells you, oh, that's on the exam? Main. The word main. If I start yelling at you, if I start screaming at you, I say, or if I do this, that means it's on the exam. One time, if I, I don't remember, I can't remember if I told you or not, my glasses flew up in the air. Oh, yeah. You remember me saying that? Yeah. The student goes, oh, that's on the exam, right? You pick up body language from me. The students that succeed are the ones that are watching the professor and if he's stressing something, it's on the exam. And I just told you the four main elements that make you who you are, 96.3% of you is carbon, hydrogen, oxygen, nitrogen, C-O-H-N. So that spells Cohen, C-O-H-N. So I remember it. Now, will I ask you about this number? No. All I'm saying is that you need to know that the four main molecules, uh, sorry, elements that make you who you are is carbon, oxygen, hydrogen, and nitrogen. Do you have other things? Of course you do. You have calcium in your bones, of course, and so forth. So you are, you do have other elements, but I'm just saying that the main ones are these. 
You even have elements that come in very small quantities. They're called trace elements. You don't have to memorize this list. But a trace element is an element that you need in small amounts. Now, some students make a mistake here with this one. Don't make that mistake. Do not underestimate the role just because you don't need that much of them. Iodine, for example, you, all you need is a little, a very little bit of iodine. That's it. But try to stay away from it. You're going to have a problem. It's called a goiter. goiter. Your thyroid is going to be this huge. Because to make the thyroid hormone, you need iodine. If you go and stay away from iodine on purpose, for whatever reason, you're going to have a problem. So do not confuse the fact that you need very little of it with its importance. It is very important that you have iodine in small amounts. It is very important that you eat spinach to get iron in small amounts because you need iron. Without iron, what disease do you end up with? Does anyone know? Anemia. anemia. You got problems. Anemia. Yeah, anemia is lo low number of red blood cells. You got huge problems. If you find yourself sleepy all the time, tired all the time, and you can't even get out of bed, you might want to check your anemia. You might have anemia, and it could be a simple effect that you're not eating enough iron. Maybe, right? The doctor will diagnose that. So this is what I'm trying to stress, to stress for you. Just because it's in small amounts does not mean you don't need it. It means you need it in small amounts. It is still important. But what are you mostly made up of? Four elements. Four elements. Which ones? Oxygen, carbon, hydrogen, nitrogen. You got it. Right. Now, the smallest part of the atom, sorry, the smallest part of matter is the atom. But can we break the atom into small parts even further? Yes. Here they are. The components of an atom is the neutron, the proton, and the electrons. The neutrons are neutral. That means they are not charged. The protons are positive. Are we catching that? Mm -hmm. Does that mean I'm going to ask you what charge is the proton? Of course I will. All right. The word neutrons come from neutral, which means no charge. no charge. The problem is electrons, you just have to remember, they're negative. There's nothing in that word that reminds you that they're negative, all right? So electrons are negative. Now, if we look at a typical atom, we realize something, that the protons reside with the neutrons. In the atomic nucleus, the protons reside with the nucleus in the what nucleus? The atomic nucleus. The, I'm trying to distinguish that nucleus from the nucleus of the cell, right? Do not make that mistake. This is a nucleus that is much smaller because it's the atomic nucleus. The nucleus of the cell has DNA in there. That's something else. This is the atomic nucleus, the nucleus of the atom. It is much smaller. It, ha it has two things in there. Protons, which are what charge? Positive. 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 And neutrons, which are? Not charged. Not charged at all. And where are the electrons? They're outside. They're always circulating the nucleus all the time. They're always in motion. So at any given time, it, watch this, watch, watch. If I say, hey, the electron is right here, it's already gone. By the time I say it's right here, it's already gone. Okay, it's, it's gone. Okay, now it, it's gone. I can't catch it. Right? So, for example, if you say Dr. Saad is on 408, exit 5, by the time you look for me, I'm already on exit 6. So, what's the best thing to say? Dr. Saad is on somewhere on 408. I need to be right. So, the best way to say is, where's the electron? Somewhere here. And you'd be right. That's called the electron cloud. So, because the electrons are always in motion, they will produce what appears to be the electron cloud. So if you say there's somewhere here, you'll be right all the time. But if you say they're right here, they're already gone. Because they're always in motion. Okay, some words. The atomic number is the number of protons an element has. 
And that, listen to me, mm -hmm. the atomic number is the element's signature. Meaning, you can identify the element just by simply looking at the atomic number. That's it. So for example, carbon's atomic number is six. It's right here. This is the atomic number. You can use the key to tell you that. The atomic number for carbon is six. And watch this, only carbon has an atomic number of six. So if I say for, to you, for example, hey, I discovered a new element. Yeah, you did, yeah. How many protons does that? Six. You're gonna look at me like, <laughs> that's not new, that's carbon. Because only carbon has six protons. This is similar to, hopefully, your social security number. Hopefully, only you have that social security number. So when you look at your, that's me. I hope nobody else has it. Well, it's the same thing. The atomic number identifies the element. And the atomic number is the number of protons. All right. The mass number is the addition, is the combination of protons plus neutrons. And it's this number right here. For example, carbon, that would be 12. Protons plus neutrons is the mass number. So watch this. Protons plus neutrons is equal to the mass number, which is 12 for carbon. And the atomic number for carbon is? Six. So what's the number of neutrons? Six. Yeah, so here's what you do. It's simple. You take the number, the, sorry, the um, mass number, and subtract from it the atomic number. So in this case, the mass number for carbon is 12. The atomic number for carbon is? Six. The number of neutrons is? Six. And that's how you do it. The atomic mass is the weight of the protons plus the neutrons. The protons and the neutrons have mass to them. Then the electron, listen carefully, the electron's mass is negligible, which means you can ignore it. Yay. So 12.011 for carbon, what is that? That's the mass of the six protons plus the six neutrons. Well, what about the electrons that it has? You can ignore its mass, mass because it's very light. It's like me walking with 12 textbooks in the hallway. Six of them are books and the other one are lab manuals, right? And I'm struggling with them. And I walk past you and you put a feather on top of it. You didn't really change the mass. I mean, that's negligible. So you can ignore the mass of the electrons because that does not factor into the mass, the atomic mass of the atom because it's negligible. It's very light. So the atomic mass is the added, the added mass of the elect sorry of the protons plus <laughs> neutrons. Very good. Now, the other thing that you need to know before you do the next exercise is that the um, I just escaped my mind there. Hang in there. <laughs> mass number, atomic mass. Oh, there it is. All the elements on the periodic table, listen carefully, it'll save you. All the elements on the periodic table are not charged. Are not charged. Are not charged. The ones on the periodic table are not charged, which means what? Which means for every proton, there's a negating electron. That's what it means. Catch it, please. Catch it, please. It'll save you. I'll say it again. This element is not charged. Why? Because for every proton, there's an electron. So what's the overall charge? No charge. No. Yeah, the overall charge of the element is neutral. Because for every a proton, there's a negating electron. Mm -hmm. So we can use that information to figure out the number of electrons carbon has. Carbon has six protons that are positively charged, right? Mm -hmm. But this carbon is not charged because for every proton there's an electron. So how many electrons? Six. Six. Okay, how many electrons in fluorine? It has nine protons. 
electrons. Nine electrons. What about neon? Ten protons. Ten, Ten electrons. electrons. There it is. Every element on the periodic table is not charged. So for every proton, there's a negating electron. Okay. So from the atomic number, we can get two pieces of information. The number of protons, that's for sure. <coughs> but because of what I just told you, all the elements are not charged. The number of protons will equal to the number of electrons. So now we can do this with carbon. We can say carbon has 12, mass number of 12. Watch this. Carbon has a mass number of 12 and an atomic number of 6. That means the number of protons is equal to? 6. six. The number of neutrons, what do we do with these numbers? Subtract. Subtract. So neutrons is equal to 12 minus 6. six. This is not charged. So the electrons is equal to? 6. six. You see that? So what I want you to do for Wednesday, listen carefully so you're prepared. Besides preparing for lab two, which means you do the pre-lab two, just in case I ask, for, ask you for it. You need to do post-lab one, just in case I ask you for it. The graphing exercise is a mandatory hand-in on Wednesday, and only Wednesday. All right, you will, you will also do this one. Um, this one, to get you ready for Wednesday. You should be able to do this now that we talked about this, and you now have the information on video. Sounds good? All right, it's in your PowerPoint. It's already there. Right. Yeah, just answer the question marks. Two minutes, you're done. You don't have to print it, just write it on a piece of paper to follow through. I'll see you Wednesday, guys.